Julian Assange's life is in danger. His revelations through his amazing computer skills led to the US vice president calling him a high-tech terrorist. And other prominent Americans called for his assassination. Some Americans still have a lynching mentality, as he hasn't been charged with anything. Our prime minister called him reckless and irresponsible, but our federal police found that he didn't break any law. This is a David and Goliath battle of biblical proportions. How can we save him from the US? Nicola Roxon. <laughs> He hasn't been charged. We hold this poor fellow from Mastercard in to Parliament House the other day and asked him what the hell they were doing with this financial blockade on a publisher more than a year after this blockade came down. It was a really interesting conversation. I can't disclose what he said. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you ask him? American Constitution guarantees free speech. Since when it is a crime, to disseminate the truth. I saw you on Q&A the other night. You asked the first two questions, and I saw your hand up the whole time during the rest of the discussion. Yes, Can well, you tell us what you wanted to ask then, and what did you think about the reply that you were given by Nicola Roxon? Well, uh, Nicola Roxon basically made false assertions that the government is giving consular help. They just want to do the same with the Americans yeah. and, and expose him to great danger. Did you hear Christina Assange's Radio Australia interview just yes, afterwards yes, when she's, yes. she said that Nicola told 18, 18, 18 lies, yes. one of which was that he fled the country, he fled Sweden, which was which, which wasn't true at all. absolutely yes, untrue. Yes. Some of them could have just been ignorance. Maybe it wasn't 18 lies, maybe some of the facts she just hadn't read about. Yes, but uh, every democratic country's government duty is to protect its citizens. Liberals didn't do that with David Hicks, they didn't do that with Mamou Habib, and the Labour doesn't do it with Jan Hassan. Habib, they had to give him a, a big compensation because he was uh, uh, taken to Egypt for torture. and. Uh, Julian Assange's life is in danger. Dead man can't leak stuff. This guy's a traitor, a treasonous, and, and, and he has broken every law of the United States. The guy ought to be, and I'm not for the death penalty, so if I'm not for the death penalty, I only want to do it, illegally shoot the son of a There is a concerted effort to nail him, to shut him up. In my opinion, if the legal attempt, uh, which I'm certain the United States government is behind, if this fails, uh, he'll simply be assassinated by a CIA assassination team. He hasn't done anything wrong. He has been arrested basically for 500 days, and they haven't come up with any charges all that time. You know, I mean, if, uh, usually if somebody commits something, then the charges uh, <laughs> come out pretty soon. But the Americans don't like to be criticized, and they don't like uh, the criminal activities to be exposed. Interesting enough, if you go back to the Nuremberg trial, it said that if in the army you get an instruction which is illegal, then you not only shouldn't obey it, but you should report it. And that's what actually Bradley did in America. You know, that, that he, you know, so basically, if, if the same principle applies not only to, to the Nazis, but to, to everybody else, then Bradley hasn't done anything wrong either. Because, you know, he was just exposing the criminal activities of the American army. Yeah, that's right. That's, uh, They're trying to keep that issue out of court, out of the yes. courtroom. You were at the WikiLeaks Assange and Democracy Forum yes. and at UTS. Scott Ludden told us that they had dragged some poor fellow in from MasterCard and asked them what the hell they were doing blockading an NGO like WikiLeaks and not just WikiLeaks for a year and a half and he said it's very interesting what he had to say unfortunately I'm not at liberty to tell you so why don't you ask him and so apparently you did did you ring up David Masters and yes 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 what he said was the following he said that they are merchants and that 
any merchant has got the right not to deal with somebody if they don't want to. And then he said that he admitted that he, they uh, actually did this because of instruction from our Prime Minister and our Attorney General. He also added that if any funds would be going through them, which is given to Julian Assange to defend himself in court, that they wouldn't block that part of the transaction. What I read was sort of like what you said, we can block anyone we like. But uh, <laughs> I'm very amused about the, the term uh, like. They don't meet any of their customers. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not, right. not one. So how can you like or dislike a customer? You know, that's absurd. That's absolutely absurd. Why would it be an any financial institution's object to send somebody bankrupt? Instruction can mean a number of different things. I give instruction. I teach people. But those are not orders. People can choose yes. whether they want to follow the example as a teacher that I set. Was that the kind of instruction you were led to believe it was, or was it closer to an order? Well, I think it must have been closer to an order, because um, uh, basically, did they ever do it to anybody else here? I don't, I don't think so. Why do you think David Masters told you it's almost like he confessed, in a way. He said too much, perhaps, but why do you think he told you, somebody on the phone, well, what happened? The thing is that I had several phone calls. First I spoke to a woman, I think I wrote her name down, but I definitely was a woman. And, uh, you know, and I said, what right have you got to do that? And she said, well, I, I will, you better ask masters. You know, that obviously she was not at a higher level. Masters from MasterCard. <laughs> I think it was my, what was that? I forgot his first name, actually. David. David, David Masters. And uh, so then, uh, then I tried to get ma Masters. Once I got him on the, uh, a message that he, uh, what his mobile number, then I got, rang him on the mobile number, and then he said, oh, ring me, ring me in my office number tomorrow, and so I did. So, I mean, he had a few phone calls from me, and... Uh, why he admitted to it, well, I don't know, I was a bit, I just didn't, uh, uh, when he told me that he can, they can block anything, uh, I could have left, left the conversation there, but I didn't want to, I, I wanted to see uh, if I can sort of uh, expose his, uh, his views a little bit more, and I kept on asking, and, and so finally he, 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 you know, he admitted. Was it one that was transmitting the instructions of the other? That he said that he was on that instruction, that whether, whether they did it separately or, 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 or the Attorney General said for argument's sake that we discussed it with uh, the Prime Minister and we want you to, mm -hmm. to block it. I mean, I don't, I, he didn't give me any detail, the details. so I can't. But he did mention both names. Yeah, oh yes, he mentioned both names. What he tried to say, he was trying to shift responsibility from, the, from, from MasterCard to somebody else. You know, I mean, I have, no, I have no proof of anything that, that, that that's what happened, but that's what he said. Well, that's right, but what you do have now is you've got the chance to, to say what happened from your side, because he's already denied it. But why should one believe him more than they believe you? That's right. You know, I have, I, I've never have fabricated anything, you know, the, I mean, the, you see, when I said never, um, during the Holocaust, uh, we had to pretend that we were somebody else than what we really were. <laughs> Otherwise, we would, I wouldn't be here talking to you, I would be in ashes, in, in Auschwitz, you know. So, so there are, you know. There are conditions where you have to lie. Yeah, there are, there are, when your life is at, at, at risk, then you, and, and, and the only way to save it is, is to tell something untrue. Well, <laughs> it's not a crime to tell a lie then, <laughs> surely. No. The list that the Nazis had was from IBM, the American multinational organization, who gave uh, the Nazis uh, with uh, 
card system, how to track the Jews down. If, in fact, if you go to the Holocaust Museum in New York, the first thing you see is an old IBM machine with the cards. Oh, wow. And when mm. Hitler, in his wisdom, declared war on the United States, IBM moved from Berlin to Switzerland and kept on doing it. And they definitely would be responsible for the life of a few hundred or two, three hundred thousand people at least, if not more. And not a single person has ever been charged for IBM because they're an American multinational. And mm. that's how they were running it then yeah. in the United States, and that's how they're running it now. You know. And they all try to pretend, you know, that they, that they got high moral standards, you know, and, you know. And, yeah. and, God. <laughs> well, I've been to Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, and and uh, the, the, uh, they didn't even declare war to Cambodia or Laos, and they bombed the hell out of those two countries, and, and out of the three countries, they killed about two million people. I think my city is going to collapse in a minute. Tell me one last thing: Would you vote for Julian Assange as a senator? If you oh, were... absolutely. Yeah.